you know, I think of all the schools we cover, I'm probably most plugged in with Geyer, and I know you're plugged in with Geyer. You know, I know a lot of people just – they never were going to say they're going to lose a game. Yeah. But Allen is just a different it's animal. A, it's a whole different animal. And yeah. I don't think they ever really had a realistic shot of winning a district championship in that district. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, yeah. Allen has yeah. 7,000 kids. and Yes. You know, it's just totally Small college. That's but anyway, so my college. point is – I think Geyer is an obvious winner just from getting out of Allen, but then they have to play, they have to deal with South Lake Carroll, but you know, they've beaten South Lake Carroll twice. Right. So, um, you know, that's, that's something out of, out of, out of the realm of possibility, but you know, who are some of the winners and losers in y'all's eyes as far as realignment goes? I know mm-hmm. Steve and I have talked a lot about Lake Dallas being, you know, a team who benefited mm-hmm. a lot uh, from realignment and more the division split in five right. a in general. Um, you know, Steve got to go over and talk to Coach Young at Lake Dallas and, and really dive into that for our football magazine, which will be coming out next week. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, Steve, what, what were kind of some of the things, you know, that you found out? Of <clears throat> well, the biggest thing that we noticed uh, about Lake Dallas just when all the uh, enrollment numbers came out is, is how, you know, when you when you see the enrollment numbers, you're like, OK, they, they are what they are. But when you put Lake Dallas's enrollment number um, into perspective, they're, they're, they're very close they're to very being a close 4A to that 4A. They're, They've been playing with, yeah. you know, against yeah. Ryan, who's one of the bigger 5A I think schools there's the only, state, so. I think we counted it up. There's only like maybe 17 yeah. schools yeah. smaller than them. less than 20, I know. And, and 20. only two of those schools are actually in the DFW Metroplex. Yeah. I think South Oak Cliff is, uh, South South Oak Oak Cliff Cliff is one Princeton. of them. And then Princeton. Most of them are probably West Texas schools. Coach Young and his yeah. staff will have them fired up and ready to go. That's well, and that's the one thing, you know, just talking to Coach Young, um, they're used to it. At this point, um, you know, they've been in a district with Prosper, which is now, of course, a, a 6A, 6A program. Yeah. Um, they've been in uh, they've been up against uh, Fort Worth schools over the years, um, you know, Frisco schools. They're used to competing against those teams and, and they they fare, you know, pretty, yeah. pretty well against them. I'm thinking with this division split, you know, with them being probably the biggest winner out of, you know, the whole bunch of all the Denton, yeah, Denton area schools that. that we that we cover. And I, I, I think that they can, they can put together a pretty significant um, uh, run there. Just looking up at the makeup of the district that you've got a couple of relatively new schools. I think three of them are within three years yeah, of opening, yeah. including Braswell. Um, and so uh, Lake Dallas is set up to right. really do some, some talent, talent wise too. And talent yeah. wise, they've and got they the have, quarterback. And they have probably, you know, arguably the best quarterback in this area. Yes. Back, so. Yeah, absolutely. I know um, it's a little bit outside of the Denton area, but I thought another school who did, you know, uh, really well with realignment was Aubrey. Uh, you know, just w- getting away from Sol- Salina and Melissa. I mean, mm-hmm. those two teams are tough. They do have Graham and Iowa Park still this year, but I thought Aubrey, you know, benefited. It's generally at that size, anytime you can go out west versus yeah. out east, you're going to be a winner. You know, ask ask Argyle. They, yeah. They've they've enjoyed that road, and um, they they've done it. They've done both. So I think usually when you can go west, it's a little bit more favorable than going east. Hey, we've got a viewer uh, comment here. What happened with the Geyer Potique game? Was that uh, something on the schedule so that got changed up during realignment? Uh, Potique got put into a bigger district than expected. And so they had to cut one of their dis- non-district games. And so Coach Walsh and Geyer had to scramble there at realignment day uh, and, and get back to getting in uh, with North Crowley. So you ask questions, we'll answer them right Brady, here. Brady just Boom. fires off that answer. <laughs> I love it. You know, another one real quick, too, is is Braswell. I know they're heading into year, yeah. year three. Um, they're no, they've been uh, fighting an uphill climb with, you know, the likes of uh, Denton Ryan and Denton and, and all those schools and the you know being in the same district they they get a little bit of a shuffle too being in Lake Dallas's district that may be a little bit more favorable to them as well yeah, it's a little so, bit more of a level playing field mm-hmm. for a new school and yeah. like you said i think they're one of is it four or maybe even five schools in that district that are all there's with, under three. four four years old I think. Yeah, yeah three under three at and three one has started playing their first part yeah of the one year. of them Lebanon is this, trail i think uh, yeah. i believe yeah. so yeah so you know so yeah, Braswell. I'll be interested to see how many games they win this year. They made they made a lot of strides last year, and um, you know we'll talk more about them next week. But um, you want to get into Steve's backyard, uh, the Ryan Raiders? Sure, I'll do whatever you guys want me to talk about. What do you want me to start with? Start with Ryan. Well, um, you're the producer, so 
You tell Yeah, them. we switched around. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Steve. Go okay. ahead. Ryan Raiders, man. Let's start go with Steve the Ryan Hennigan. Raiders. Well, um, I like what I, I like I what mean, I was... That district is loaded, by the way. The, the district is loaded. Let's start you know, with the, that. The, you the know, division split got... makes everyone spread out a little bit more. And I think everyone kind of saw that grouping coming when they announced they were going to do the division split. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, this is, I, I would say this – correct me if I'm wrong. You've been following Ryan for a long time, but – Seems like this is probably the toughest district they've been in in, in a pretty good while. From top to bottom, it's it's a lot more um, it's it's a lot more competitive. I mean, nothing against the previous districts that they're in, but I mean, when you look at Birdville and mm-hmm. and um, Colleyville Heritage and Great Grapevine, yeah. um, you know, Denton's still in that mix, and Billy Miller's doing some good things over there. Um, it's a from top to bottom, it's a it's a lot more uh, competitive. You have the Carrollton schools in there as well. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's going to be, it, it poses a completely different challenge this year, I think for them. And then the biggest challenge of course, is just the, the turnover, right? I mean, um, the, the biggest thing that, uh, that everybody knows about Denton Ryan is, Hey, Spencer Sanders, isn't there anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. Towski Dove, Gabriel Douglas, they're not there anymore. So it's uh, a lot of, uh, it's very easy when you walk out to practice and you're like, okay, Who's who? Who's going to be where? You know, you're trying to trying to figure out where everybody's going to be at. But Coach Hennigan's sons, uh, he's slotted to be the the number one actually, quarterback. Correct? Number one and number two, you got Ian Hennigan, who's a senior. Uh, he's uh, the uh, the entrenched starter at this point, and then you've got Seth Hennigan, his his uh, younger brother, who's a sophomore, nice. um, as the number two. Uh, both of them, I, I happen to be at the uh, just taking the scrimmage last week uh, against Richland. Both of them actually looked really good, um, made some pretty sharp throws. There were some throws that got away from them. Neither one of them are, are mobile like uh, Spencer Sanders. I don't think uh, that's not a knock on either of those boys, though. I don't think uh, you can find very many kids out there that are going to be at the level of um, Spencer Sanders. But um that's a, that's a hard that's a hard uh, those are hard shoes to fill basically but uh, yeah. they look good and I, I think the the best part the best thing for those two quarterbacks is that uh, they've got an incredible amount of weapons around them um, Adam and I were talking about this before the show came on but um, Ryan's going to go with a little bit more of a two back uh, two back system this year I'm going to stop you real real fast yeah um, you know. I've I've told you for the past th- few years, and I've told lots of people, you know, the one thing that really concerned me about Ryan, as great as they were, and as great as Spencer Sanders was, was their, you know, it's hard to say lack of a running game other than Spencer Sanders, but Spencer Sanders was their running game. And, you know, you like you said earlier, Imani Bailey ran for a lot of yards last year, but... Mm-hmm. In the big games, it was Spencer Sanders running the ball. Well, you got to remember, too, that offense threw the ball about 62, 65% right. of the time. That's what I'm saying is I feel like, you know, maybe I'm old school, but I've always felt like if you're going to win a state championship, you have to be able to, to run the ball and run, and run it really well with someone other than your quarterback. Oh, sure. And I think, that, I think that caught Ryan a couple of times in the past few years. You know, do you think that's going to change this year with Spencer being gone? Are they going to be more of a balanced – Offense, or is it still going to be throwing the ball? No, I think or... it's going to be a lot more ba- balanced. First of all, to your point, Amani Bailey um, is is back uh, in the backfield, uh, running back, and that's a uh, nearly thirteen hundred yard rusher, fifteen touchdowns last year. And then they've co- uh, I mentioned the two back system. Um, it's actually going to be a little bit more than that. But Kiori Hicks is a, a sophomore, um, about two hundred pounds, kind of. Just a, a big bruiser. Good sized kid. Yeah, he's a he's a good sized kid. So those are going to be the, you know basically the two main workhorses back there. But then you've got uh, Trey Smith, who's a starting free safety that uh, is just a uh, is probably the fastest kid on the field for them. Billy Bowman Jr., who's got uh, some a, a ton of interest, including from Texas Tech. And then you factor in Drew Sanders coming over from uh, Colleyville Heritage. Was there also a transfer from West Texas that came over? Um, a move in. Rather, uh, I can't think of the name, but I thought I heard uh, you're catching me West on that Texas, one. Yeah. I know. I mean, obviously, Drew Sanders came over from um, you know Colleyville Heritage, and he's going to step in nicely from Lake Dallas. Uh, yeah, well, Lake Dallas, Colleyville Heritage, yeah. now Denton Ryan. Hmm. Um, he's going to step in nicely at middle linebacker, but he's also going to factor in uh, a lot in terms of um, you know the passing game. Uh, they've got a lot of uh, basically 
you know, not take up too much time, but basically they've got a lot of weapons around those two quarterbacks. I think that's going to make things easier in terms of the transition. And, um, you know, what have you seen defensively from them? You defensively, know, I talked, to, talked about it earlier. You know, they gave up some points last year, and they were able to overcome it because they had Spencer Sanders and mm-hmm. Gabe Douglas, and you know those guys. They, like you're saying, they still have offensive weapons, but do you feel like the defense is going to be different this year? The biggest or? thing with the defense last year was a lot younger, uh, especially on the defensive line. You know, they graduated a ton with Ernest Brown. Um, you know, going off to Northwestern. Um, and several, several other really big guys and, you know, even Tyreek Davis at linebacker. I mean, just big guys all of a sudden no longer there. And so, uh, I think the biggest area where they were, uh, the youngest was at defensive line this year, everybody's back on the mm-hmm. defensive line. They've got a, um, a veteran secondary, um, they've got six starters, uh, back, but then when you throw in Drew Sanders into the mix, who is about what, six, four, six, five, two thirty. Uh, Oklahoma commit. Um, they've they're not at a loss for uh, for talent over on the defensive side of the ball. That's clearly the strength of of this team this year is is defense. I think they Ryan has always hung its hat on playing sound defense and 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 rallying to the football. And I think um, they're gonna they're gonna be a lot better this year, especially up front, putting pressure on the quarterback and putting their offense in a better position to score some points, short yardage type stuff. What do you all think about, um, you know, everyone's talking about Ryan and and rightfully so. What do you all think about the other Denton team in that district and Denton High and Billy Miller? You know, last year they showed some flashes and then Landry Cannon got hurt. and A lot of people got hurt. Yeah, well, yeah, a lot of people got hurt. Isaiah Wofford got hurt. Yeah, was it a couple of running backs, every top receiver? Yeah, and then their quarterback who was – I would tell you what, I saw that game against uh, Ryan when well, it was on ESPN, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I was out there for that, too, and I was really impressed with Landry Kenny in that game. I mean, he was – you know, he was, everybody yeah, is. Yeah, I think everybody was. He just – he played – he just ran really hard, and he had a good arm, you know. Obviously, he's going to be back this year. I know they didn't do spring ball because he was still mm-hmm. recovering from his injury, but, you know, what do you all, what do you all see from – Land, they've got they've got a new offensive coordinator over at Denton uh, in David Johnson, who played quarterback at Tulsa, um, coached at the college level last year, and they think that his offense they're kind of tweaking things a little bit. Uh, they think his his terminology and and his the way he's going to implement his scheme will kind of fit with what they have coming back in Landry and uh, you know they have Zylon Posey back in the backfield and he's really bulked up. You know I, I've been out at Denton a couple times and you mm-hmm. look at Zylon and he looks he looks the part. Uh, you know as a junior. Um, as a guy who could have a big season on the ground, so he's looked the part really because yeah. he came from Sherman over to Denton, yeah. um, and he was fantastic um, as the backup running back for Sherman uh, a couple of years back. Yeah, and so he looks. I mean, yeah, and he rushed for 600 yards and six touchdowns while battling injuries all the way through his sophomore mm-hmm. year. Uh, you know, with they have three guys back on the offensive line who uh, you know were all district guys last year. Um, so that gives him kind of a solid base uh, going into his junior year, and I know they're really excited about what he brings. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Denton is they just got to stay healthy. Yeah, I, I really like what Billy Miller brings to the table. Him going into year two, especially, I think he's he he knows what he wants, and and his coaching staff and him are, and the and the players I think are are really going to start getting more and more on the yeah, same. It page. takes a couple of years to get him to buy into the just, philosophy. It's just staying healthy. Cause he's got some, some dudes over there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. honestly, I mean, and it starts with a, with a capable quarterback and, and I, I I've yeah. been impressed with Landry since the very beginning. And he, he did some great things, you know, even in that Ryan game and, and, and uh, throughout the season until he got hurt. And obviously when he goes down uh, you know, Zylon Posey gets hurt as so Isaiah Wofford gets hurt. And, you know, obviously the season starts going down. They lose to Braswell in the season finale. At that point, they were already out of the playoff right, mix anyway. Yeah. Um, that was kind of, you, you kind of saw that one coming. Uh, yeah. You know, just with the injuries. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I mean, good for Braswell. Oh, they yeah, pick up yeah. another win. But at the same time, I mean, uh, Denton uh, was pretty, pretty beat up to say the, the yeah. to say the least. Yeah. So. And defensively, um, you know, Denton has a lot of guys back on defense. They're excited about, uh, you know, Elijah Thibodeau is another guy mm-hmm. who will get in at receiver, but he had four interceptions and 80 tackles, you know, in the secondary last season. Uh, you know, and they have a lot of guys in that secondary back too. Uh, it's not just not just the offense, which should help them out this season. I saw somebody pick Denton, um, you know, 
third, anywhere from third to fifth team in that district yeah. that, with uh, Heritage and Ryan and Grapevine and all that sort of stuff. If they can stay healthy, I mean, they can, they can, I mean, they'll be right in that mix and, 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 you know, competing for a playoff spot, which I know obviously is a name of the game. Yeah. 